Welcome to Loop TV. I'm your host, Gene Munster. I'm joined today by Turn Signal founder, Jazz Hampton. Uh, Turn Signal is a company that is helping to bridge the gap between law enforcement and the drivers. And it is a topic uh, that often comes up in our investment brainstorming sessions at Loop. And when uh, Turn Signal came across our desk, I couldn't help but invite Jazz on to join the show. Uh, welcome, Jazz, and you know, help frame in. Maybe the, a, a good starting point is just to think about the opportunity more broadly from your perspective. Yeah, you know, so uh, I, my name is Jazz Hampton. I'm the, the CEO and, co and co-founder here at TurnSignal. Um, and uh, being here from born and raised in Minneapolis, Minnesota, we're kind of at the epicenter of this movement and this call for change. Um, and myself, my two other co-founders, one who they both have their MBAs, one in a finance background, uh, the other in marketing and tech sales, and myself being an, an adjunct professor, a law, a lawyer, uh, and, and someone who had a computer science undergrad degree, we knew we had the right skill set to say, hey, there's awareness around the relationship and, and between uh, the, the bridge that needs to be built between drivers and law enforcement. There's awareness around that, especially here in Minnesota. Um, but how can we be a part of the solution? And that's what we're excited to do with Turn Signal. Um, be a part of the solution, be in, in an app to bridge the gap between those two groups. So bridge the gap, it uh, sounds good and important. Undoubtedly, we all want to do that. And how do you approach bridging that gap? What's the kind of the, the business model, if you will, the value add that Turn Signal adds in helping to bridge that gap? Yeah, so uh, Turn Signal is an app that you have on your phone and it's mounted on your dashboard. And when you're pulled over, all you do is use voice command to activate the app or press one button and it instantly starts recording that interaction with law enforcement. And just like we're on a video conference right now, connects you to a video conference with an attorney 24 seven, 365. And the mission, how we bridge that gap. So let me simple. interrupt you there is, yeah. so you get pulled over, your phone is uh, hopefully mounted uh, probably to your, your windshield and then you voice activate, turn on uh, turn signal and then pops up a, a human, a real attorney to help navigate the, the interaction. That's correct. And so the attorney's on the screen, attorney that's been trained in de-escalation through a third party organization, which we're really excited about. Um, and that attorney is there to, to do three things, right? To protect your rights, to de-escalate that situation. And the third and most important is to ensure that the drivers and the police officers are getting home safe at the end of every day. And that's kind of to the, how are we bridging the gap uh, part of the work that we've done is meeting with law enforcement. So I've met from everyone from the chief of police in, in St. Cloud down to a patrol officer in St. Paul to find out what we can do with turn signal so that when they walk up to the back of a car and they see a turn signal logo on the back of the vehicle, they feel more safe approaching that car than they do in any other interaction they have that day. Can you talk a little bit about the de-escalation piece? Like what, what is it about having an attorney that's there live? It would seem like it's more advantageous to the driver than the, the officer, maybe, maybe not, but how, how does that de-escalate it? Well, that's actually the core of de-escalation is that both parties feel a little, a little more at ease in this situation. The driver, for, for obvious reasons, as you just alluded to, um, your rights are going to be protected. You know that it's being recorded and with that person there, uh, you feel safer. With the law enforcement, when they are giving legal and lawful commands that otherwise may not have been followed, now there's the driver has a recording of themselves maybe uh, following that order or not. And then an attorney who's saying, hey, listen, uh, that is a lawful order. And although you might be scared or you might be frustrated in this moment, why don't we follow the lawful order and then we'll take care of this on the back end if you need some legal representation. Let's just go through the process and get home safely right now. That's so a real yeah, added attorney value. Can speak to being an advocate to the driver in real time and kind of, as you said, de-escalate the situation makes a ton of sense. I can see it being a, a unique approach to, to this uh, problem, this opportunity. And uh, you mentioned, you talked about some of the different people in law enforcement that you've talked uh, about it. And, you know, as you, you're an early stage company, just kind of getting up and running. And uh, as you think about uh, reaching out to more law enforcement, uh, how do you think that it's generally going to be received? So we've reached out to over 15 and sat down and interviewed them, um, and it's been received really well. Uh, officers are saying things like, hey, if this makes drivers feel more safe and at ease, and we are more at ease because we feel more comfortable, the interactions are just going to be better, more palatable, more amiable, right? Uh, and the other thing is they, they say if there's anything wrong from the police chief level, if there's anything wrong within their department, they do want to see it. 
it, there's there's nothing that a police chief wants to, to do other than root out you know anything negative that's happening within the, the force and that's some feedback we've received as well um, so we're excited that that they are, are thinking positively of it and that's really important as well uh, as it shifts into we're not just a, a b2c model we're talking to businesses about onboarding their employees and they want to know that we're helping uh, bridge the gap and not being adversarial in these interactions. So let's take a minute and talk about some of the details on the business model. Can you walk us through how it works? Yeah. So uh, when you download the app as a user, it's a subscription-based service, right? To have an attorney with you 24-7. Um, it's $9.99 a month or $75 for the year. But right below those two buttons when you sign up is a button that says, I don't think I can afford this. And if you just press that button, uh, we walk you through about eight questions. Um, how much do you make an hour? Uh, how many hours are you working a week? Uh, how many dependents do you have? Your zip code, et cetera. And at the end of those eight, if you're within our threshold, we let you onto the app for free instantaneously with no other questions asked. We don't want anyone's uh, un inability to take on another monthly payment to prevent them from feeling safe when they're driving. So that's the, the B2C model that is, is uh, part of our business. And then the flip side is we're having a lot of conversations with businesses and saying, hey, I, I know that you had a post on social media, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, talking about how you want to improve your, your D&I strategies within your organization. I was the former director of diversity and inclusion at my last law firm, over 300 employees, 15 states, and I had three goals. It was to, uh, to improve diversity within the building, to retain those employees, and then third is to do community outreach and make sure that you're helping the community that, that you are a part of. What better way to do that than to provide turn signal to your employees so they can feel safe driving to and from work or their kids to a basketball tournament on the weekend? And then a step further saying, hey, uh, there's a lot of people that just clicked in the app that they can't afford this. Let's, let's provide uh, funding so that those people, let's say uh, all those students in Minneapolis North High School can all have this for free as an organization sponsored by X, Y, and Z company. So it's really a good opportunity for them to build, uh, build a DNI strategy or just a good corporate responsibility strategy larger uh, for within their business and externally. Uh, that's helpful on the user side. Can you talk a little bit about on the, the content side, the actual attorney support, what's in it for them? Yeah, so the attorneys on the platform, because, uh, and I don't know if we've mentioned this yet, you can you can press this when you're being pulled over, but you can also press the, the secondary button when you're in an accident, right? A lot of folks, we talk about pe people with kids that don't know what to do in an accident. Now you can have uh, an attorney that is, is well-versed in that law answer as well. Um, and whether it's a criminal attorney or, or one of those attorneys that's well-versed in accident law, um, they see this as a great way to get out there in the community and be a part of, of bridging this gap, right? When people are at their most scared and vulnerable moments, a law firm and attorney can be there to help them out. And that creates a really strong bond that law firms otherwise can't, can't uh, obtain. So they're willing to be on the platform uh, and, and not uh, have any additional incurred costs to either us or the driver during those interactions on the phone. Got it. So they're willing to jump on the platform for free and uh, or maybe pay a nominal fee to be as part of it, essentially to generate business. Correct. There's a there's a, a, a onboarding fee and a recurring nominal fee for those attorneys. Um, but the the great part about the the app is with the attorneys, it's almost like an Uber setting where um, you can just click "I'm not available" and the calls will no longer come through to your phone. So when you're at your kid's soccer game or you're having a glass of wine with your wife uh, and you're watching a movie, which my wife gets annoyed when the phone goes off during that time. Uh, then you can just be not uh, you can be unavailable and then when the movie's over the game is done you just click i'm available again and the calls are able to let to come through to your phone again makes a ton of sense as i mentioned before you're an earlier stage company and uh the app it's it's got a great flow to it it still is relatively early can you talk about any sort of how are you judging your success right now since it is so early yeah, so our su success is always kind of the funnel, right? So it's uh, how many uh, people are available in a market. We're only available in Minnesota right now. How many people are in the market? And then down to how many people are downloading and then down to how many people are filling out the, the information and becoming actual members. Uh, we're excited about the numbers so far when we compare it to our marketing spend. Uh, we were getting users onboarded, but even more excited about the, the number of companies that have reached out from Fortune 500, I should say Fortune 50 companies, down to companies that have you know 25 employees we've had a lot of b2b traction of people saying how do i sign my employees up how can i get them onboarded got it and then what would be the time you talked about it available in one state today how do you think about rolling out there's probably some 
uh, legal questions around attorneys and their ability to give advice, you probably have to get, I don't know, do you have to like have an office in every state that you provide the service in? Yeah, so that's that's a, a really important step. The most important step of expanding into more jurisdictions is when you press that button, uh, the your phone sends us the geolocation to say, hey, where are they? And if you're in Minnesota, then we connect you to only Minnesota attorneys, right? Uh, when you cross 94 and you're in Wisconsin, when we're there and you hit that button, then it's only going to call Wisconsin attorneys. States, state laws are different. And so you, we have to account for that and have attorneys who are, who are barred and, and able to practice law in that state. So our expansion plan just is tied with the attorneys onboarding. We're really grateful. We have an unbelievable uh, team member joining uh, in the next uh, two weeks. And he's just solely dedica dedicated to, to making sure that attorneys in other states are learning about our platform and onboarding. And where our goal is to reach 10 more states before the end of December. Got it. Uh, incredible. Sounds like some exciting growth piece there. And let's fast forward five years from now. We're thinking back at uh, where Turn Signal's been and, and where do you see the company at that point? You know, I, I like to, and this this might date me. I'm no longer, gen, millennials aren't the youngest anymore. So this might date me, but I would, I would always say, when I used to want to go to a movie, I would call the movie hotline and sit there for 20 minutes and trying to find out uh, what what theater was playing, what movie at what time. And now the accessibility, whether it's uh, whether it's one of the apps you use or just going online, no one would ever say, let's call the hotline and find out when the movie is. Um, I want us to be that same type of transition. I want anyone when they're pulled over to say, oh, yep, uh, I was driving in in Wyoming or I was driving in Delaware or the, or the state of Washington, and I just had turn signal up, so it's not a big deal. I want it to be ubiquitous across this country. Uh, we've even had requests from Canada. We talked to the general counsel, of the law enforcement group in Canada, about moving up into, into their 10 territories. Um, we want it to be a, a national or international name that when you use it, people say, oh, yeah, I always use turn signal when I'm pulled over or when I'm in an accident. Got it. So do you think you'll be a standalone company? Or are you a part of a, a bigger organization? How do you see that? You know, I think we are set up and built for all the success to do it as a stand-up company. Uh, we, we could expand to all 50 states without a problem and be able to take that on. But if there's opportunities uh, on a utilitarian level, in my mind, if there's opportunities to partner with a Waze or a Google or, or another uh, Maps or other applications oh, yeah. that we can integrate and then really boost the users. The more people that are driving with us on their phone and feeling safer, the better society is, the better uh, municipalities can handle their budgets, the better police can feel safe. It's a win-win for everyone. So we're always open to, to that kind of expansion as well. Cool. Well, I suspect that uh, the majority of people listening will be eagerly waiting for you to expand in other states. For those in Minnesota, it sounds like you are available uh, through the App Store and uh, appreciate joining. I appreciate just... Uh, nibbling away at this problem, it is quite reassuring that uh, extremely capable people are going after uh, this opportunity, this problem. And uh, Jazz, uh, wish you and your co-founders at Turn Signal all the best of luck. On behalf of Jazz, Gene, and Luke TV, bye for now.